Hey gang, this is Pat Dewar of Dewar TV. Today we've got an excellent edition of Dewar TV talking about my business, my insurance sucks. I mean, does anybody else feel that way? Especially when it comes to things like uh, your business, uh, you know, the, the company that you work for, if they've got open enrollment, if they've got some of the things that are uh, out there as far as health insurance for groups, so often, I don't know about you, but I've sat there and looked at that stuff and went, okay, how much should be my deductible and what should we do here? And what is all these extra, you know, I mean, there's so much to learn, right? Well, Mark Roden uh, of MyInsuranceSucks.com is on the show again today, and we're talking about tips for teachers. Open enrollment's coming up, and, and Mark, I want you to go into, you know, what are some of the things that these teachers should be doing, learning, and they must know before they uh, they get too involved with open enrollment or miss the window. Thanks, Patrick. Yeah, well, it's kind of near and dear to my heart because my wife is a teacher. So uh, who should we help most but the folks that are helping our kids? So this is uh, applicable to everyone, really, anyone that's had an open enrollment, just like you said. Uh, so let's look at um, basically the first T. They're, they all start with a T. So let's, let's talk about talk to someone outside your uh, school or outside even in Texas we have the TRS system outside the TRS representative think about it if you call in their 800 number or talk to someone inside your school you're really getting biased uh, counsel so you want to talk to someone outside that circle and we're going to talk about if they happen if you happen to call someone like myself we're going to talk about all your options we're going to dive into what your spouse might or might have if you have a spouse. We're going to look at maybe options that because you're a first year teacher, real, real life story uh, from last week, she was so young and a first year teacher that she could actually buy cheaper insurance outside the TRS system. You think someone on the 800 number of the TRS helpline is going to tell her that? I don't think so. So really just talk to an expert. And if you talk to someone and you, you smell commission breath, as I like to say, and they're desperate and they're trying to make a sale, Hang up the phone, walk out of the office, whatever you have to do to get out of there because you want to talk to someone who has your best interest and as Dave Ramsey says, the heart of a teacher. So that should make sense. Very good. So what's another tip? Uh, the next tip I would say is even after an open enrollment is over with. Okay, say you, you do all the above. Uh, and, and by the way, this, this three-step process is real easy because if you forget any of them, go back to talk to an expert, talk to someone. <laughs> but the next one is train yourself all year long. Maybe you make a decision uh, and you're on, uh, let's just say, the high-deductible HSA uh, plan. So now you want to train yourself to look at ways where you can save money. That might be to always uh, be cognizant of in-network versus out-of-network because all of them have a most HSAs, health savings accounts, will have a PPO provider. So if my own wife has made the mistake, Mark, well, we're never going to meet our deductible, so I didn't bother to present our, our pharmacy card at the pharmacy because we're not going to meet our deductible anyway. What difference does it make? Well, in that case, it made the difference about $128 because on that card, even though you didn't meet, you're never going to meet your deductible if you remain healthy that year, you still have something called a PBM, which discounts that pharmacy to what the insurance company would be paying if they were paying the tab. So you know they have all these cost containment measures in there to keep their costs low. And so that's an excellent tool. And if you go to my website, myinsurancesucks.com, we have other tools and, and tips that, that we use every day with all our clients. Uh, and pharmacy is a big one. But you also might want to look at where you spent the money Train yourself, where am I spending money? Oh, yeah, Johnny fell off the um, uh, uh, playground and we spent, you know, an hour in the, or an hour in the emergency room, we wish, six hours in the emergency room and, you know, $2,000 on MRIs and x-rays and everything else. So just kind of take inventory all the time and, and look at where you are spending the money and always be training yourself for next year's open enrollment. It's kind of like Christmas. It's going to come every year, so be prepared. Well, one question I would ask is, what when I think about this stuff, how does somebody take inventory of their needs anyways? Well, 
when you're, te- I can't read without my glasses, so sorry, I was <laughs> checking my notes there. <laughs> um, the question was, t- t- how do you take inventory? Right. When some, you know, a, comp- uh, uh, a family like ours, we've got, it's just, we're empty nesters, but we've got a couple of kids in college. So when I think about that, you know, we, we, how do we decide what our needs are, uh, really, because quite honestly, health care is as clear as mud. Yeah, I mean, it is, it's risk mitigation, as we covered last week. You do the best you can. You kind of look at, like insurance companies, I, I say they drive down the road if they were in a car, not by looking out the, uh, the, the, the window. They look down at the rearview mirror. They look at what has happened. So you just kind of do the best you can in looking at where you've been spending money, uh, evaluating that, and then also how much it's going to cost. The very first step is how much are they going to take out of my paycheck or how much am I going to send them on a monthly basis. That's number one, and it should be uh, the first thing you look at because that's where it all begins. It's not, you know, I've heard everything over the last 20 years. Why am I ever going to meet the deductible? you know, when selecting their deductible. That's not the object. (laughs) The object every year isn't, how can I get into house money? No, the object is how can I get them to take the least amount out of my paycheck and mitigate the most risk? Uh, So that's, you know, that's kind of my technique. Well, in fact, one of the things that I see so often is that, you know, you, you talk to people and they go, well, that'll never happen to me. That'll never happen to me. And quite honestly, I hope it never does. But, you know, last year we had a son that, that had to spend four uh, adventures to MD Anderson because, uh, you know, he was a 21-year-old and had Burkitt's cancer. So, you know, talk about the $200,000 that, uh, that he has to take care of now, so to speak, in some form or fashion uh, because he had no insurance. He wasn't registered with ours. He wasn't covered on, he didn't get his own insurance. He was just, you know, out that's there. An, that's an excellent point. And that's, that kind of helps fill in the gaps. People sometimes say, well, I don't understand why this is so expensive. I don't understand TRS family plan on just say the third or ac- active care two is what they're calling it with like a thousand dollar deductible. I don't understand why that's a thousand eleven hundred dollars a month well because those situations happen the law of large numbers Um, and if you look at the odds of someone's house burning down and you look how much you're paying for homeowners and you could say the same thing for auto I mean we're all very fragile human beings and it it does happen just like it happened to your family we all know someone so someone if someone's getting really 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 cheap insurance and you're talking to someone at a party or a function someone is subsidizing that cost, an employer is subsidizing, and now we have the federal government subsidizing a health plan. So it's very expensive because health care is very expensive. So when somebody's looking at that, a lot of uh, families, $1,000 or $1,100, uh, is, is that what they're actually paying for health insurance if they're like a teacher? Or are they getting some sort of assistance as in like the the ISD pitching in for some of that? Well, if you have group insurance as far as the PPACA or Obamacare, Affordable Care Act, whatever you want to call it, if you have access to group insurance, you're pretty much, you, you do not get any subsidies from the federal government unless you can prove that uh, your portion, your employee only portion is over 9.5%. So very rarely is that going to happen. Back to the teachers, yes, many, last week my calendar was full of, it seemed like everyone's having a baby. What happens in teachers, they might have two two teachers that were doing the employee only rate and now they're having a baby. Okay, that's a totally different situation. They were only paying like $80 each out of their paycheck, no big deal, and now Mama Shaker wants to stay at home with the baby. Well, now you've created a situation where they're going to be paying $1,000 a month, let's say, on one person's salary. So, yeah, those people call all the time because that has their attention. So that is... Is that because they're... Because now it's it's essentially employee and family, i.e. the new child coming. That's correct. They went from two employee onlys, which the employer is heavily subsidizing by law here in Texas. 
they have to pay for half of it anyway. The TRS system is very rich. They actually pay for a lot of it, uh, typically about $240, $280, depending on the district. So yes, always check all the, I know everybody goes to that, if they have kids already, they go to that family rate and they fall out of their chair. We'll get back up, <laughs> look at the employee only rate, employee spouse rate, employee children rate. Well, we have four kids. My wife selects the employee children rate and it's, it's you know, like $300 a month for five belly buttons. I mean, that is like stealing money. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, just look at all your options talk to someone who helped. It is complicated. That's why I think that talk, talking to someone, all I'm going to do if they happen to call me is I'm going to talk them through all that. So you need somebody that, that's going to lead you through that process. And it's not really emotional. It shouldn't be a sales game. It's, it's kind of simple math and a little bit of inventory on what you're doing. And then it might be something that you, act, you do next year. Maybe someone is having a baby next year. So you want to select your plan based on that. You know what your expenses are going to be, and they're going to be huge, as opposed to that unknown. A lot of people need to consider, you know, big, bad, ugly things can happen. I think we know that. But just, just kind of remind yourself, okay, if I happen to have an appendicitis, yes, I've chosen the higher deductible, but is that $5,000 really going to bankrupt me, that $5,000 deductible? Gee, I wonder if that happens. I could pick up the phone call the hospital after I'm out and say, you know, I know I owe you $5,000, but could I just pay you $100 a month until I get this paid off? I bet you nine, nine, to, uh, nine times out of a 10, that hospital's going to say yes, because they're used to chasing people down. They're not used to for the phone ringing saying, I want to pay you. Let's find a way for me to meet my debt obligation to you. Now, again, all the disclaimers, I'm not saying it happens all the time. But just think about things like that in that perspective as opposed to, oh my gosh, I've got to come up with that $5,000 immediately. Maybe not. Maybe. And you were going to pay the insurance company three or $400 extra out of your paycheck anyway. See where I'm going with that? Yeah. One of the things that's really important is uh, I think one of the biggest, and, and tell me if this is correct, Mark, but one of the biggest thing, uh, mistakes that anybody could make is going to the hospital with a credit card to pay a bill. Work out a payment with them. Yes, yeah, most of them will work out a payment. There's sometimes elective surgeries. My, uh, one of my kids just had, now this is dental, it's different than health, uh, but you know, they just had their wisdom teeth out. Well, the doctor wants their money right then and there, or they've got, you know, a, a, a credit card company willing to let you borrow the money. But yeah, look at all your options. There's a cost to that. If you did borrow money to pay for a medical, uh, you know, there's a cost to that nine times out of ten. So um, just you need someone to help you. And again, if you get a counselor, that's going to help you in that crisis situation too. It's not just the sale. It's if something happens, you can call your counselor and say, okay, you told we talked about this. Remind me what I'm supposed to do and not do. Um, and here's the good news, Patrick. It doesn't cost you any more money to have a counselor. If you went to BlueCrossBlueShield.com or MyInsuranceSucks.com, the price is the same. The insurance companies pay our fees, not the individuals. Very cool. Well, um, I know that's really about all it is, there is time for today. I want to keep. I know we're keeping these short. So again, if you're uh, interested in learning more about what your options are. Uh, you've heard the tips for teachers approaching open enrollment, especially in the te Texas area. Uh, contact Mark at MyInsuranceSucks.com. I love that name. It's pretty easy to remember, and typically it's pretty true. <laughs> so with that, thanks again, uh, Mark, for another week, and we will talk to you guys next time. Thank you, Patrick.